Industrial designers are often about all the details of a product, not just some of the details of the product. In this case, I'm just going to point out that uh, this crescent wrench has uh, many details to it that make it attractive. One is the sand cast form and building that sort of eyelet area. So I'm just going to open up the skeleton model and uh, go into insert mode at that uh, at that corner and just redefine that area just to show how it's built. I revolved, I, I actually sw looks like a revolve, but I swept a an arc across that geometry. And if you'll look, I put it in at an angle. I'm going to go ahead and just type in a uh, a two or three degrees draft in that in that area. There's a three degree three degree draft, and I'll check out of there. Resume the solidify. And you can see now that uh, once once that ultimately gets mirrored, I'll have I'll have a uh, a drafted eye hook. My name is Roger Davis. Uh, I'm an industrial designer with Ingersoll Rand uh, out in New Jersey. Ingersoll Rand designs um, power tools. We also own uh, a golf cart division and club car. Um, we do a lot of compressors um, and a lot of things to help mechanics get uh, work done. Our company is switching to Creo, so the engineers uh, currently are using different software than the industrial designers. We typically design in SolidWorks, so we need to get on the same page uh, with engineers and uh, you know, just so we can accelerate product development. My experience at Design Engine has been great. I've, I've learned a lot of new uh, techniques, um, not only just with Creo, but in modeling in general that I can apply to other software that I use uh, you know, to model as well. We're not always using Creo, but um, it's going to be, it's, it's definitely, we learned a lot of new methods that uh, will help our workflow quite a bit. We spent some time talking about top, top down design, which is a technique that I've been familiar with for a while, but he's given it a structure, uh, especially when we're talking about um, the lattice structure. So you, you're kind of building a bounding box and that gives you a lot of freedom to modify your design and manage um, failures that, um, you know, that, that's, that's probably one of the hardest things about uh, modeling in CAD software. You might make one change and then you end up losing your entire history tree. However, we learned a lot of good methods for dimensioning things that might not be standard dimensioning for a drawing, but they work really well in the software package and you get a lot of confidence that you can change your model around, generate plenty of concepts and not have to worry about um, the model breaking down. And that, that's really good for us because we have you know, rapid prototyping technologies where you know it's you want to print three models a night or something like that to have for for a presentation the next day. So it's um I th I think he saved us a lot of hours. Bart is a fun guy to be around. Um, we have a lot of similar interest anyway, and so it was great to. Uh, um, he's on the other side of the wall. He's an engineer, and I'm an industrial designer. So it was great to hear you know from his side uh, the types of things you know that engineers think about. And you know, on my side, um, industrial designer, how you know we can come together and work on a solution. Um, the class in general and his teaching style, it's uh, laid back, but I still feel like we accomplished quite a lot. And um, I think it was a very valuable week. The environment here is 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 like home or or like a you know a nice loft apartment that you. You, you know, you feel very comfortable at. I've, I've taken classes on Creo in the past where, um, you know, we'll have an instructor come on site and it's, it's, it's very boring. It's almost like being administered uh, a test, you know, like an SAT. Um, but here, you know, the, we have a lot of time to ask questions and explore options and it's, you, you never feel like you're behind or, 
you know, that you're holding anybody up because there's a, there's a lot of good examples that, that come out of the questions that, that we ask. And Bart's very resourceful and, you know, he gets in there. If he doesn't know the question, he, he can figure it out just uh, right away. And so that's, that's very helpful. So my stay in here in Chicago has been uh, really great, it's, but it's been freezing. So that's been tough. However, there's plenty of uh, hotels and restaurants really close to the office. So we, we got to work to uh, walk to the office every day. And the restaurants are just amazing. I, for instance, I, I love Mexican food, and I get in in every city I go to, but I had some of the best, best Mexican food I've ever had right here in Chicago, which was surprising to me. Um, you know, and didn't get a chance to go out a whole lot at, at night because we were doing an intensive class, but you know, I, f I, f I still enjoyed my time actually in the class and you know, kind of like field trips at lunch, checking out the town. So. Um, I would definitely recommend the class to to a colleague, or um, I already have actually. I uh, talked to somebody that I used to work with and said he really needed to get into this class and uh, you know meet Bart. So um, it's been a great experience, and I'd recommend it to anybody, especially industrial designers. can sort of see the, uh, the the datum curve there. I'm going to layer that off. Hide, just hide all the curves. Looks like I, I went ahead and hid the solid as well. That's a new function in Creo 2. And uh, then, then I'll uh, resume back to the assembly and hit regenerate to update that assembly. The, the skeleton model takes everything into account. Another thing that industrial designers might find odd or awkward is this tessellation that's occurring on the model. I'm going to go ahead and just share how to ratchet up that tessellation as well. Uh, PTC calls it quality. I'll go to options and uh, this shade quality should say tessellation. I'm going to set that to 30. The, num the highest you can go is 50 but uh, that might be just inappropriate. I'm going to say no here so that uh, my update doesn't doesn't uh, take place on the next time I open Creo and you can now see that sort of sharp edge right there for the, for the die cast part itself. So in this in this model I have uh, ref reflection showing and uh, you can even see some of the gradient light that's occurring. I just want to share where that setting's located. I'll go to uh, my options again and just to poke through here. Environment, system colors, you can change all the colors out. I'm going to enable the ambient occlusion effect. Uh, you can see some of the shadows that we've seen in, in some of the renderings that Maya puts out. Um, th this is a, a Maya-esque tool that PTC has, has uh, made a partnership with Mental Ray. So that's a very Mental Ray look to, to the model. And uh, it, pretty cool looking. Uh, if the model isn't too complex, you can just run with that occlusion on.